How are we doing preschool at home, friends? Doing all right? All right. Well, this week we are going to be talking about some ideas that you can do with that fun dinosaur theme story time that we have. Um, it. I don't have much in front of me today. I just have these cute little dinosaur toys um, that we have used here for several years. So this one doesn't take a lot of stuff. You can kind of just use whatever you have at home and that'll work just fine. Um, the first idea I had is that it is fantastic for friends to start learning about measurement. And one of the easiest ways to learn about measurement is a really concrete example by using, if you have Duplos or big blocks of some sort, um, you can stack those to see how tall something is. And that's a way you can start measuring. You can walk around with a ruler and start working on it that way too. Kids do enjoy that. But it's really nice to have that concrete physical manipulation of items to see how tall something is. So you could see how tall a book is, or you can see how tall a toy is. If you have a dinosaur toy, see how tall that is, and then start seeing if, it, if other things are taller than it or smaller than it. Now, dinosaurs, we know, were probably very tall, so you can see how tall your child is, and you can do blocks up to how tall your child is and count those. Um, it's really fantastic if you want to work on like groups of 10, so you're doing by 10s, if you're doing something bigger like that. Um, usually when we do it here, I have them draw a line on a piece of paper and then they build up to the line, but you don't have to do that at home. You can have them lay down and you can build it next to them or something like that. Whatever you have at home that works best for you, works great. I just think it's really fantastic for the kids to have a physical example of stacking something and seeing height or length grow from that. The next idea I had is that if you do have any little dinosaur toys at home, I think at home we found my kids have never gone through a big dinosaur stage, so we don't have a lot of dinosaurs, but I did happen to find some like free ones that came with a food. Okay, so um, they used those and stomped them into Play-Doh. Or what I also really enjoyed was they pressed the Play-Doh into parts like, see how this has all these ridges? So they pressed it into there and pulled it back to see what kind of impression it left. Um, so we really enjoyed that. You can have the dinosaurs walk around and spell out a letter if you're working on letters. You can have the dinosaurs just leave a bunch of footprints and then count how many footprints there are. So you can do it like that. If you have a couple different kinds of dinosaurs, you can press them in and see if they leave different kinds of footprints. And then you could do some addition and see how many of one kind and how many of another kind. Um, another idea that you could do with Duplos or Play-Doh is to build a dinosaur habitat. So you can figure out what you, you and your child can research what kinds of things dinosaurs needed. I mean, all living things need air, shelter, food, and water. So you can start right there um, and start to try to figure out what kinds of food they needed and maybe what kind of temperatures they lived in. And then they can build that if your child is really into dinos. If they're not really into dinos, maybe just talking about that everything needs food, water, air, shelter, and you can build it with, like I said, Play-Doh, Duplos, if you don't have either of those and you want to make it as an art project, that sounds fantastic as well, that you can do like a cut piece of art. Um, we like to just do whatever random things we can find in the art closet and put it all together. And I like to put out a bunch of things like snipped up pieces of yarn that they can use as vines and things like that so that it has a lot of texture to it as well. It always feels like a more official project to kids if they have other things to add to it and not just markers or crayons. Although markers and crayons are some of the better things for their writing skills, I know. All right, let's see. The next idea I had is that if you do have little dinosaur toys like this, you can hide them in something. If you have, if you made the moon dough last week, you could pack the moon dough around these pretty well. Um, and then your child can excavate and try to find the dinosaurs so they can dig into it. If you don't have that stuff at home and maybe you have some foil laying around, you could wrap foil around them and they could peel it trying to find the dinosaur. Um, you could do the same thing with Play-Doh. 
Um, if you just want to get out a couple things and do a lot of different activities with them this week, you can. I made it pretty easy for that. All right, and let's see. The next idea I have is a dino dig. So again, if you have little dinosaur toys or you could draw little dinosaurs or cut them out of paper and you could hide them in sand or rice or whatever kind of sensory thing that you have around that you like to use. I know some people do not like to use rice for sensory because rice is food and that is completely understandable. I know some people do not like to use sand because they have texture things and that's okay too. Whatever you like to let your kid dig through, go ahead and hide some dinosaurs in there. Like I said, if you have paper, that works. If you have dinosaur toys, that's nice and easy for you, so that's faster. All right, so a uh, dino dig where they can be an archaeologist would be a fun idea. The last one I had is sort of related to dinosaurs, but it's one of my kids' favorite activities. I don't know if you have ever made a volcano at your house, but if you just have like a taller cup and put it on a cookie sheet, save yourself a lot of trouble or in a baking pan or something uh, because then you don't have to do cleanup. Yay! Or you can do it outside too um, because we are going to have a gorgeous week this week. So you can um, just set it up with that and then put some baking soda in the bottom or vinegar and then pour in the other one. So I find it a little easier to put the baking soda in the bottom and then pour in the vinegar. I also really like to pour, put a couple drops of red food coloring in with the vinegar so that when you pour it in, it bubbles up and it's kind of a pinkish color and you can pretend that it is lava from a volcano. Now that is not how volcanoes work and you can absolutely explain to your child that volcanoes are actually um, really hot magma from the Earth's core and you can go into that if your child is ready for that. Um, but you can also just talk about, we're gonna make a science volcano and just put some baking soda and vinegar together. You need about, oh, I don't even know. I don't, it doesn't have to be very scientific measurements. You could just put in some baking soda and then pour in some vinegar and you'll get some lovely fun bubbles coming up. Okay, all right. I think that's all I have for this week. I really hope that you are doing well and that these at-home ideas have been helpful for you. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.